Hello, I'm Greg Whitby, and I'm here with Jessica Azar, a teacher at St Margaret Mary's at Marylands. Welcome, Jessica. Thank you. How long have you been teaching? So this is my second full year, and before that I did about six months of casual work. Right, so you're new to the profession? Yeah, very new. And excited by it? Yeah, I am. Learning yeah. lots. Learning Still lots, lots to learn, yeah. Well, what have you learned, and, and what's it changed for you in this very short time? I think the idea you have going from university of what teaching will be is very different to the reality. There's so much more involved um, and it's more rewarding, I think, actually being in the classroom and developing relationships with, relationships with students than what you feel like you're going to do at university. So. But what was the difference? Just the understanding of how much more there is involved in teaching. So I had no idea about annotating programs or how to write programs, really. I don't know that you learn those things as in depth um, in university as you do when you're on the job. So things like that, more admin and how to write programs, how to write assessments and rubrics and things like that. After two years, you're leading some innovative practice in the school already. <laughs> <laughs> what drew you to that? Um, I'm really big on um, teacher community and social media blogs and things like that. There's a really, really big teacher community on social media and I try to follow all of those things and I'm always looking for new ideas, different practices that I can bring into my own classroom, whether I take them as they are or adapting them for what works for me. And so I had seen um, a teacher, I think on Pinterest, had made a display out of paint chip cards that they had um, taken from Bunnings. Mm -hmm. And they had, it's basically, they call the um, shades of synonyms. And so you might have good, great, amazing as a way to extend students' vocabulary in their speaking and writing. And so I had taken that concept and just tweaked it a little for my classroom. So we have an interactive display where students can come and take the words, use them in their writing or in their speaking, and we build on that together as well. How was it received by uh, your, your students? So at first, um, they weren't too sure of how to use it, whether or not they were allowed to take things off the wall or how they could use it. But uh, over time, because I've had it for quite a few terms now, they engage with it really, really well. I think at the start, I had a few examples to show them. And then just quite organically, it grew that we would build on it together. So all the time now in different KLAs and even sometimes just out of their own thinking, something they've heard at home or read in a book themselves, they'll come to me and say, I've got an idea for the shade wall. And they'll tell me their words and we'll, put, we'll write them up and we add it to the wall. So they engage quite well with it and they use it in different KLAs as well. So it's not just in the literacy block, sometimes in the history and geography, they'll go and they get a word and they'll use it in their writing. So they're engaging with it throughout the day. So it's a very integrated approach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we took that sort of technology away from you, how do you think it would influence your teaching? Take away the shade wall? <laughs> I just think it's about adapting. So um, for me, I think as a teacher, you have to be able to kind of roll with change. So if something like that was removed, you'd have to just find another way of extending their vocabulary and engaging them in their writing. But social media. Oh, social powerful. media. Oh, yeah. I think and it's very topical. So, yeah, yeah you know. I think social media is kind of the way of the future, to be honest. I think it's really important and not necessarily to engage with teacher communities online. That's not for everyone. But for me, I think it's a really it's a really useful way to get information out there and to even to learn for yourself. It's a great way to spread ideas and to share things that you're, you're doing. How does it change your interaction with your colleagues? Obviously. Social media? Yeah, social media and that kind of, you talk, you talk about communities, so you have some virtual yeah. communities as well. I think, I think for me, it's made me more open to engaging in different dialogues with people because I have, I'm seeing so many different ideas and ones that don't always necessarily relate to what I'm doing in the classroom. I see things that I think this would be really great for a kindergarten class. Mm -hmm. So I might go to my colleagues who work in kindergarten and show them those things. Whereas before, I might not have had a reason to go and engage with them in a conversation. So for me, it's made me more open, definitely more sociable as well. Are you connected during the day and at night with um, your colleagues and these? Yeah, um, definitely online. I have like a teacher account that I have myself and some of my teacher friends will follow me and we talk about different ideas and we tag each other and things like that. So yeah, I think so. So you've taken responsibility for your own learning. And yeah, you know, yeah. I think it's important to always be on the lookout for how you can improve your practice. So you will get opportunities at school with professional learning through your employer, but I also think it's important to always be looking yourself as well, so reading books or looking up blogs and different things like that. Have you found any of your colleagues are a bit slow to come to understand the power of, of social media? Yeah, I think um, some people can be scared of social media, but I, I think it just comes with time. People aren't used to 
you know, that way of, of thinking or that way of doing things. But with time and once they see kind of how amazing that can be as a resource, they can um, grow into it, yeah. What sort of change have you noticed in your, your students' performance? So initially when I um, implemented the shade wall, I had in mind that as a way that I could extend the top performing students, so the higher ability students, just to challenge them with their word choices and things like that. But because of the way it's scaffolded, if a student sees a word down the bottom like amazing and they don't know what that means, they can go up and they can see the word good and they can find out what the word means. So it's really universal in, in its design. It works for all students. And I've just noticed in their writing, they're more aware of the word choices that they're using. So sometimes I'll even see they've written a word like hungry. They'll cross it out and they'll go get the shade wall word and it will say ravenous. And they've written that in their writing. They're more aware of the word choices that they're using, trying to make their writing more interesting and more Some creative. of those are very sophisticated words. Yeah, for, for yeah. <laughs> and the way they develop is so organic. It comes from books we read. It's often in shared reading, there'll be amazing language and really, really new words for the students. And in, you know, in the past, you might kind of skip through that or might let them know that means this. But because of the shade wall, we really unpack those words and it kind of sticks with them now. So they have this really amazing vocabulary. I, I, I hear in your voice a real passion for what you do. Yeah, I am, yeah. yeah. So what, what's the, the thing that really drives you? I think it's the relationship that I have with the students. I'm, I really want them all to succeed. And I understand that every student is on their own journey. So I have students who can perform at to this level and some who can perform at this level. But as long as they're learning something and they're working at their own pace, that's what drives me, seeing them succeed.